Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And in this video, we're going to discuss popular conceptions and the real Christmas. An article taken from the All Seeing Eye, Volume 2, Number 2, December 1923, also appears as a reprint in Volume 3, Number 5, December the 22nd, 1926. The Spirit of Christmas. The bustle and confusion of our ever more self-centered lives is slowly killing out the beautiful spirit of Christmas. We see people fussing and stewing. We see them sinking back in their chairs at home after a raid upon the bargain counter at the 11th hour, with their hats over one eye and their corn singing in nine languages and three colors, muttering to themselves, thank God, Christmas only comes once a year. Then, that other group, we know so well, who send all their presents out late in order to see what the recipient sends them first and are broken hearted if the influx is not as great as the outpouring. In other words, there are only a few people in all the world who have really preserved the true spirit of Christmas and most of these are children who have not yet been caught up in the maelstrom of our commercial ethics. The spice of Christmas is indeed losing its savor, and with its going will vanish one of man's greatest opportunities, which, like all that have gone before, he has abused and neglected. The cultist must seek to build again in his own life the spirit of Christmas, beautiful in its simplicity, appealing in its sentiment, and joyous in its ideals. Christmas whispers many things to the soul that thinks. It means more than merely the gift of one to another. It teaches in its mystic way the story of the divine gift which has been made by the spiritual powers of being to the worlds of men. As the child hangs up its stockings and finds it in the morning, filled with gifts and goodies, given in the name of old Santa Claus, that unknown person who is said to dwell at the North Pole. So all through life, Man has no greater opportunity than to give in the name of his God those things which the world needs. The spirit of Santa Claus, the giver beyond all gifts, who dwells in the North Pole of man at the upper end of the spine. And it is from here that the Ancient of Days sends out his gifts to the body, sends out his thoughts and ideals, and gives his life for the glorification of the world. Man must learn to make his gifts in the name of the spirit, not in the name of the body. For within each of us is the divine altruist, seeking to be heard above the ever-crying voice of the human egotist. At Christmas, the spirit of giving is said to rule the world, for on that day, God the Father gave his beloved Son as his gift to the world, and that Son is the spirit of life, of hope, and of truth that springs eternally in the human heart. To man has been given the work of expressing in the world of form this gift of the Father, not only upon Christmas Day, but upon all the days of the year, for the child of God may be born in man at any time. There is a terrible feeling that comes into the heart of a little child when the thoughtless parent or heartless playmate whispers to it that there is no Santa Claus. That is one of the heartbreaks of childhood. When that dream of the little old man with his rosy cheeks and twinkling eyes, his long white whiskers, and his snug red suit is dispelled in the mind of a child. From that time on, all the world seems false. The parents seldom realize enough of the plan of being to understand that they have destroyed a reality and not an illusion, and have supplanted the reality with the false. The smiling, benevolent Santa Claus, with his ponderous, comfortable figure and bag of toys, who slips down through the chimney, or in some miraculous way finds his way through half-inch lead pipes, is one of the sweetest concepts that man has. Santa Claus is the spirit of the divine humanitarian. He is always jovial, is especially fond of little children, and always brings with him dolls and toys, the playthings of the mortal man. This jovial creature, is he not the great Olympic Jove of the Romans and the Zeus of the Greeks? Is he not the spirit of Jupiter, period, expressing itself through the brain of man? 
The workshop of Santa Claus is the brain of man, wherein the spirit conceives of the good works that it may do, the thoughts, actions, and desires that it may send forth into the world to cheer the hearts of children directly above the eyes, at that point where the head starts to slope back to the crown, we have the home of Santa Claus, the organs of humanitarianism and ideality. It is there that this beloved spirit of God, the philanthropist of human consciousness dwells, ever hoping, ever praying for greater opportunity to give to others. The spirit of Santa Claus, under many other names, has been in the world since time began being brought over from the infinite, not time of eternity. In the silence of night, Santa Claus comes, stealing, bringing the gifts of light and life to man. When we go to sleep at night, tired with the labors of the day, broken down by the worries and sufferings of the world, depleted by our endless battle against the substances of crystallization, the spiritual consciousnesses were drawn and we open our body for the coming in of those little workmen who, under the direction of Jehovah, the Olympic Jove, rebuild our bodies for the day. In that way, every night, Santa Claus comes, stealing, bringing us the strength, the courage, and the bodily health to carry on our endless battles. The vital forces that nurture the human body come down the sacred chimney as the manna that descended from heaven to feed the children of Israel in the wilderness. The supreme designer of things is ever in the spirit of the benefactor, bringing light and truth and love to his children in the world. And so in honor of this greatest gift, the gift of life, and to prove that they realize this gift, the Christian world has set aside one day, the day which to them is the sacred of all time, the day when the Father made the supreme sacrifice and sent his only begotten Son, the spirit of love and truth, as the living bread which comes down from heaven. Man has sanctified this day and made it a time of gifts, for on this holy day man is to renew his pact with the divine by making his gift to the children of men. Each one of us are gods in the making, each one of us carry the spark of the divine altruist within our soul, and on that day we are to whisper this truth to the world by sending gifts to all whom we know. And these gifts must not be merely things we buy or sell, but must contain the divine essence of the eternal humanitarian who gives the best that he is and has to his children in the world. On that day we must give our light, which is the life of our brother men. The gift without the giver is bare, and in order to be true to ourselves at Yuletide, we must give ourselves, our spirit and our life, with the gift that we buy. Listed below are some suggestions, some resolutions, for us to make to ourselves that we may be true to the spirit of Christmas and to the eternal giver, who expresses himself through the gifts of man to man. When we realize the goodness of the universe and how nature pours from her horn of plenty her gifts to man, how nature's eldest children, the world's saviors and initiates have sacrificed their lives and hopes that man may be better. When we think of the tiny children of the elements, busy night and day to make life beautiful and clean, when we think of the masters walking the earth, living symbols of self-sacrifice and altruism, when we think of the spiritual rays of the universe pouring into us all the time, our life and courage and hope, when our souls hear the music of the spheres as it thrills through our own heart, and we understand better that all the universe cooperates together to serve us, to save us, and give us opportunity for the fullest and greatest expression. Let us realize that our duty is to be part of this great plan of salvation and send our strength our light and our love and our pledge that we too shall help to spread the light of life to the world of men. At this moment, let there be born in the soul of man, the Christ, who is the hope of glory, that the salvation of man may come in this world of pain through that spiritual one before whom we bow like the wise men out of the east, offering their three bodies for the redemption of the world. Man may offer gold and jewels, but they are not his. He may offer soft velvets, clinging silks, but they are not his. 
He may offer land and buildings, but the rocks belong to nature, and the building is the power of God. Man eternally offers that which is not his, to which he is not tied by spiritual ties. He picks up handfuls of dirt and offers them to his God, to whom they belong before. The only thing that it is his to offer is his body and the vehicles of consciousness which he has built down through the ages. He may offer his mind, that through it the thoughts of God may be known to man. He may offer his heart, that the love of God may be sent as a benediction to shine as a star of hope upon a world in pain. He may offer his hand with its power to mold, that he may blend the elements of matter into a more conscious glorification of the eternal plan. But other than these three, he has nothing to offer. When the spirit in you is born, as on Christmas morn, you will live no longer for what the world may give you, but your joy and your life will be in giving to the world. The children and men wait, like the baby on Christmas Eve, for Santa Claus to bring the present, a world, widowed in suffering, waits and hopes for the coming of the light. May there be born in your Bethlehem this day that Christ in you who shall be the light of the world, the strength to steps that falter, the courage to lives that are afraid, and the hopes of glory to the children of creation. Let this Christmas be different from all the others in your life, in so much as your spirit is with your gift. For a broken crust with the Spirit of God is better than a string of pearls that are set in emptiness. The heart makes the gift rich, and the Spirit makes it sufficient. Let us this year resolve that we shall give for the joy of giving, our reward being a happy smile in the eyes of the ones who receive the token of our realization of the spirit of Christmas. The reward of the Master is to see his disciples smile. For in the laughter of children sounds out a wondrous song from which pour streams of life into the heart, the servant, and the master. And the master is servant of his flock. Let us this Christmas creep into the darkness of some waiting life and leave our token of good cheer, without name or symbol to show our presence. But only in the name of Santa Claus, the archetype of the spiritual giver, who labors all alone throughout the year to make the little wooden toys and dolls that bring joy to the heart of the children. And let next year be for us a year of labor, that when again Yuletide comes around, we shall have a great sleigh full of toys, not perishable wood or little sawdust stuffed figures, but great soul qualities built of thought and meditation, which we may give to the world as truth and light just for the pure joy of giving. Let us bury the hatchet of the past this Christmas, and as one step in our realization of the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God, send our memory and goodwill to those who have done ill to us, the friend who has been untrue, and the one who has broken our hearts. To such ones let us send our token, for while the flesh has been weak enough to break our bond of friendship, still we are one in spirit. Let us give away this year that which we possess of love, truth, and knowledge to a world long crying for our light, and let our first step be to make right the broken things in our lives, the broken friendships, the broken pledge, the broken trust. Let us this day forgive them all, as we hope to be forgiven. In all our giving, let it be as in the beautiful story, the gifts of Santa Claus, not a gift of men to men, not just a gift that the giver may be known. Let us slip silently in and leave our blessing, and if any should ask who the giver be, let us answer. There is but one, the Spirit of God in man, who comes into our soul as a babe born amidst the beast but who someday shall lighten our way and show us the beauty of giving and sharing. Christmas is not a time for creed or clan, for family or for friend, but is a moment for when all the world is banded together to keep trust with one who is the friend of all. If they would live like him, let each of them be this day a friend of all, and like the sun, God's greatest gift to man, the shining rays of our soul light, the souls of the just and unjust alike. For man's is the privilege to do, and God's to judge the doing. 
When we sit down to our Christmas dinner surrounded with the good things of the earth, let us not forget we have other bodies besides this form of clay. We feed this one many times but seldom feed the other bodies which also grow hungry for nourishment and attention. At this Christmas dinner, may we feed the heart with its finer sentiments, that great love and understanding be born there. We feed the higher bodies by the things that we do in our lives, which strengthen and harmonize with those bodies. During the year that is past, each one of us have passed through many experiences, which differ with the position each holds in the world of material affairs. Part of the work of Christmas is to build into the soul body the fruitage of these experiences that the higher man may be fed with the conscious acceptance of experience which is the only food the spirit is capable of digesting. Let us, therefore, take some part of this day and go away from the world and, sitting down quietly, review the last year of our lives, bringing to mind the good works we have done the kindness we have shown, the mastery of over conditions which we have expressed, the harmony which we have radiated, and the services we have performed for others. Let us group all these things into our minds and spread them out before us on a spiritual table, for these things are the food of the spirit. Upon this it lives and grows. By means of this it expresses even more completely the qualities which we would that express. This is the Christmas dinner of the soul, where there is built into the wonderful star body of light, that robe of blue and gold, the fruitage of experience. In this way we become greater and wiser in the permanent things, feeding not only the body, but nourishing also the consciousness which is the motor and regulator of bodies. Let us make our New Year resolution of how we are going to conduct ourselves in the months to come. Let us lay our plan to be strong where before we were weak, to grasp opportunities that before we overlooked, and to make our lives more useful every day, so that during the coming year in the workshop of Santa Claus, we may prepare a greater and better harvest, more wonderful toys and beautiful gifts to shower upon the world when the spirit of Yuletide comes again. There is nothing in all the world today more sad than man's inhumanity to man. Where he should be kind, he is cruel. Where he should be sweet, he is heartless. And in these things, he betrays the spirit of love and truth. When he comes to take away the sin of the world, let him be true this year to the spirit, that these Christmas bells shall ring again with sweeter tune. How different is the sound of the bell tongue with its ringing anthem from the tongue of man, which slays its sharpness and destroys the plan with its cruelty. It is a servant of the emotions and not of the spirit. And do not forget the Christmas tree, that sprig of evergreen which Santi brings with him. As this tree grows up through the snow and its bright green leaves never lose their color, so through mortal crystallization, through the chill of the heartless world, through the cold months of spiritual winter, the sprig of evergreen has ever been the whispering voice of immortality. This year, let Santa Claus, the divine altruist, in our soul, bring his toys and his gifts from the North Pole and scatter them into the world. Feel him knocking at the door of your own heart and see his smiling face inviting you to join him in the work of making people happy. He will tell you that his smile is the smile of those he has helped reflected from his own face. That he is happy and his cheeks are rosy because he is ever busy. Like the spiritual Jupiter, the humanitarian of the zodiac, he is ever seeking to make the way of life happier and more glorious. Get together with him this year and as occultists and students of spiritual things, join him in making the world happy, slipping away again without ever letting anyone know who did it. Leave your blessings and be gone. Give your present and leave unannounced. For the great give, for the joy of giving, and not in anticipation of reward. The true are rewarded enough in the realization that they are doing as the master would have them. So we invite you this Christmas to become a Santa Claus, not a Santa Claus of make-believe, but to fill in your own soul the spirit of the eternal Saint Nicholas who goes out to make the world happy. Thank you for watching.
please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description below. Thank you very much.